What's up everybody? This week I am at WorkbenchCon, which is a big makers convention down in Atlanta, so I am away from my shop and I can't build any projects, but I still wanna get some good content for you all. As some of y'all may already know, I started a second channel titled Mike from Modern Builds, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. And on that channel, I've started a SketchUp 101 series. But I'm constantly getting comments and Instagram DMs mentioning the fact that nobody knew I had this second channel, even though I've mentioned it at the end of two or three videos. So because of that, I wanna put the introduction video to my SketchUp 101 series on my main channel. And I think I'm gonna do that going forward. Anytime I start a new series of videos on this second channel, I'll put the first of that series on the main channel. It'll basically be the trailer or the teaser for that series on the second channel. Now, for those of you who don't know, SketchUp is a 3D modeling software. It's not the only one on the market, but what's great about it is it's free and it's web-based, so you don't need to download anything and all your files can get stored to the cloud. And really quickly, before we hop into this tutorial, I wanna give a really big thanks to this episode's sponsor, Chromebooks. I got sent this laptop about two or three weeks ago, so I've really been testing it out and putting it through its paces. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed Chromebooks are a totally new and completely unique type of computer designed to help you get things done faster and easier. They run Chrome OS, which is an operating system that gives you the best of Google apps, built-in security, and integrated cloud storage with Google Drive. Edit photos in Lightroom, sketch project in Adobe Illustrator Draw, or stay organized with Evernote or Slack. I'm already addicted to Google Apps. I use Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Chrome, Google Calendars, Google Hangouts, Gmail, not to mention Google, the search engine. So why not use the laptop that is literally designed to work flawlessly with all of these Google apps? Chromebooks start up fast and they don't slow down over time. Not to mention new Chromebooks have batteries designed to last at least 10 hours. Instead of relying on an internal hard drive that might crash or fail like other laptops, your files are stored in the cloud on Google Drive, which means you can access them from any device, from your phone, your Chromebook, your laptop, or a desktop computer. And Chromebooks aren't just laptops. Most models come with a fully rotating, stylus-enabled touchscreen. It's like having a laptop and a tablet all in one. Chromebooks have some of the fastest and most responsive styluses on the market, and the computer knows the difference between your hand and the stylus. This makes sketching up projects or drawing art so much easier. Instead of having to hover over your screen and try and draw, you can rest your hand on the screen and you can draw naturally, and that is amazing. So to learn more about Chromebooks for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description below. Thanks Chromebooks. So right now you see what I see and I've had a few people tell me they're not sure where the free version is, but if you just go to sketchup.com, right there is where it's at. When you launch SketchUp, this is what it looks like, and I always just click and click delete to get rid of that guy. Sometimes it's convenient to have them if you don't know your finished dimensions, that way you can check proportion and see if it looks good. But we already have that. We know the bookshelf is gonna be 36 inches tall, 36 inches wide, and 16 inches deep. So, let's start with that first shelf. I'm gonna use the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna find where all of my axis meet. And you can see that it kinda jumps to that point. And I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle, it doesn't matter how big because I'm gonna let go of that left click and then I'm gonna type 16 comma space 36. And when I hit enter, you can see it snaps to that size. And right now it's only in two dimensions. It has no thickness. You can see if I order around. So I'm gonna use the push pull tool and I'm gonna extrude this face. Once again, it doesn't matter how far, it just matters that I'm going in the right direction. Then I'm gonna type in three over four and hit enter, and we have our finished shape. But it is not done yet. We need to make this thing a component. You can see that if I click it, or if I click a single face, it only highlights that one face, or if I click a line, if I can do that, let me zoom in a little more, it only highlights that line. Not to mention, if I were to make another rectangle that happens to interfere or intersect with this one, like that right there, and I try and triple click it to select everything, it also includes that second piece, and we don't want that. The best way I can describe a component is it tells SketchUp that that is a single independent piece. Just like in real life, if you have a piece that is a single two by four, whether it's a stretcher or a leg, that is independent and things can't just go through it willy nilly. So we just need to tell SketchUp that it is its own thing. So I'm gonna undo making that last piece and I'm gonna triple click it. Oh, another quick tip for beginners. If you single click an item, it only selects that face. If you double click it, it selects the face and any lines that are touching it. And if you triple click it, it selects the whole face. So I'm gonna right click it and say make component. 
Normally I don't name them, but I'm trying to be a good example here. So I'm gonna name it Top Shelf, if I can spell. Boom. So now you can see if I single click it, it selects the whole thing because we've told SketchUp, this is a component, this is a independent piece. Now I wanna get it to 36 inches high at the top, so I'm gonna use my move tool. I'm gonna reference this purple dot in the corner. You can see at corners and intersections, these purple dots, and they're just snap points that make things easier to keep things lined up. So I'm gonna reference that bottom corner and I'm gonna go up this axis. Doesn't matter how high, because I'm gonna type in 35.25. We want it to be 36 inches tall total and the shelf is three quarters of an inch thick. This is the orbit tool and it does what you think. It lets you spin around an object, but sometimes you basically need to move the camera. So if you hold down shift, it switches to the pan tool. And as you can see, it basically moves the camera around and, you, and once you let go, you can orbit again. So in combo, you can basically move the camera however you want by just doing that. Now the top shelf just sits on top of the frame while the other two shelves have the legs that go through them in the corner. And the legs are made out of one inch by one inch tube steel. So the corners of the shelves are gonna have a cutout where those legs go up through them. So I'm gonna use the rectangle tool again and I'm gonna find that axis and I'm gonna draw out a shape. And I'm gonna type in 16 comma space 36 and then hit enter. But before I extrude it, I'm gonna use the tape measure tool which is right here, uh, here and I'm gonna reference the corner of the piece again, and I'm gonna draw out along this line. Doesn't matter how far, because I'm just gonna type one and hit enter. And you can see that dot right there, and it's a snap point, just like the purple dots. It's a reference point that lets me line things up easier. So I'm gonna do that on both sides here. Click one, enter. Then I'm gonna get my pencil tool out, and I'm gonna connect the dots. I'm gonna draw this out one inch, right there. Connect the dots and then select all of this. Oh, select all of this. Oh, here's another quick tip. Sorry, I think this is the last one that I have for a little while. If you're using the select tool and you're dragging from left to right, it only selects things that you select completely. So nothing gets highlighted here, but if I do that, the lines on the edge get highlighted and then this whole face. But if you drag from right to left like this, anything that you touch gets selected. So then I just hit the delete key and those are gone. Because I haven't made it a component yet, I can segment things still. Let's speed it up. I wanted to show you how to do it with the pin and the tape measure first because that's proper and it's good for odd shapes. But if you're just doing a rectangle, you can always just get the rectangle tool back out and then just start from the corner and draw a one comma space one, a one by one shape out. Then use the highlighted tool and then just get rid of it. That's faster than how I'm gonna do the rest of them, but I wanted to show you how to do it the other way in case it's not just a simple square like this and you'll still know what to do. So once again, just grab the rectangle tool, find the corner, draw out the right size, one space one, enter, select tool, boom. Now we're gonna get the push-pull tool again and we're gonna extrude that out to three quarters of an inch. Triple click it, make it a component, and we're gonna call this, whoa, shelf two. I am struggling with typing today, holy cow. Now my bottom shelf is gonna be six inches off the ground at the top. So I'm gonna get my move tool one more time and I'm gonna find that purple dot and I'm just gonna drag up and then I'm gonna type in, whoa, I messed up. See, I'm not perfect. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna drag up, referencing the axis, let go, then type in 5.25. You can use fractions or decimals. And while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and select these points that we made earlier, the reference points, and I'm gonna delete those. I like to clean things up as I go, it helps out. Now this is where SketchUp comes in handy. I'm not sure where that middle shelf is gonna be. I haven't done the math yet, but this is gonna help me. I'm gonna use the tape measure tool right here to gauge the distance between this edge and this edge and I know that that's two feet, five inches and a quarter, and I'm gonna do some math on paper real fast and figure out where this middle needs to be. So I think I got it figured out. I'm gonna go ahead and get my select tool and I'm gonna click Control C for copy and Control V for paste. And I just made a duplicate of the piece. Then I'm gonna use the move tool again. I'm gonna find the purple dot here and just line it up on the axis. Next, I'm gonna move it up so right now I'm pretty close and I'm just gonna go to my tape measure tool. I'm gonna measure this edge to this edge. 
and it's one foot, two inches, and three quarters of an inch. And then from here, it's one foot, one inch, three quarters. So there's, a, so there's an inch difference from the top shelf and the bottom shelf. So that means I need to grab my move tool one more time, find my purple dot, go up this blue axis, and type in 0.5. So right now, I'm just gonna get rid of these old lines, get my tape measure tool back out, and double check myself. It should be one foot, two inches and a quarter. It is there, and on this side, it is one foot, two inches and a quarter. We are centered. So that right there is math that probably would have taken about twice as long if I didn't have SketchUp. So all our wood is done and now it's time to build the frame and it's built out of one by one steel like I've been saying. So I'm gonna get my rectangle tool out and I'm gonna reference that corner axis again. I'm gonna draw out a square that is one comma space one, hit enter. I'm gonna zoom in, get my push pull tool out. I'm gonna extrude that 35 and a quarter inches, 35.25, enter. You can use fractions or decimals like I've been saying. I'm gonna triple click it, right click it, say make component, I'm just gonna call this leg. Then I'm gonna click Control C, Control V, that's copy and paste. Then I'm gonna get my move tool out again, I'm gonna find that purple dot in the corner. There we go, and now it snapped. So then I'm gonna orbit around one more time. I'm gonna click Control V again, find this corner and line it up with that corner. Come on now, come on now. Don't make me look bad. There we go. Control V one more time, find the purple dot in the outside corner and boom. See, the legs were quick and the stretches are gonna be just as fast too. Get my rectangle tool out, find this purple dot and draw out an inch by an inch square. Now I know that this is gonna be 14 inches long just because 16 minus two is 14, but you can notice that oftentimes it'll just snap to an edge right there. So if you don't know what the measurement can be, this is how SketchUp can be really helpful finding it out. Now I'm gonna triple click it, make it a component, and I'm just gonna call it short stretcher. I'm gonna copy and paste it, Control C, Control V. I'm gonna find that purple corner, line it up, and do that four more times. Let's speed this thing up. And then the long ones are the same process, it's just a different length. Make my rectangle, extrude it, 34 inches in this case, make it a component, Triple click it, right click it, make component. And then control C, control V. Oops. Now it's time to put in the last one. Ta-da! And we're done. We can orbit around now and check out the final piece. Now this was all really, really simple math. Everything was a 90 degree angle. For the most part, all the math could be done with simple subtraction. So there's not a lot of pieces that I had to figure out. But say I didn't know what these long stretchers needed to be, but I was able to snap them in place. So now I can come back with my tape measure tool, find my purple dot, drag it out to the next purple dot, and you can see down there in the bottom corner, it says two feet, 10 inches, which is 34 inches, like we said earlier. So it's a good way to also double check yourself. If you've done all your math on paper and you just wanna make sure it's all right before you start cutting pieces, you can do that here because you can always add and subtract, make things longer and shorter in software, that's free. But if you cut a piece of wood or metal too short, you can't just add it back on. So you can save a little bit of money by using the software. Not to mention, things can look right in your mind, but the proportions could be a little off. Imagine I made this piece 24 inches deep instead of 16. I think it would look pretty wide and frumpy. And if I cut everything and welded everything together, I would have been disappointed. But if I put it in software first, realized it was too long, I could scale it down and make everything look proportionate. And this is just touching the surface of SketchUp. I have two more videos. One is a video of Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture teaching me SketchUp for the first time. And that one involves a lot of 15 degree angles 
45 degree angles. So if you're interested in learning more about furniture with a little more complicated geometry, check that video out. It's linked below. Also, just go check out the second channel. And then the next video I have is me building my workbench and that uses quite a bit of lap joints. So if you're interested in going a little deeper than just standard butt joints, there's a good next place to go. As long as there's a new technique or something that I haven't shown before, I'm gonna keep making videos for my projects and for the SketchUp models. If you have anything specific you wanna learn, leave me a comment below or you can hit me up on Instagram with a DM. I wanna make this as helpful and intuitive for you guys as possible and I can't know what you wanna learn unless you tell me. Plus, if you have any cool tips, maybe you saw something that I could have been doing more efficiently, or just a tip that you think might help other people, let me know, leave it in the comments, hit me up on Instagram, because that'll just help make this series better. And if you're interested in going to that second channel, the link is in the description, watch some SketchUp videos, but that's not all this channel is going to be. This is just the first series. I'm gonna be talking about how to select lumber, what finishes I like to use and why. It's basically just a place where I can share everything I've learned over the few years that I've been building things. I wanna give a huge thanks for you all watching and supporting this video. Also, shout out to SketchUp. They've designed a really powerful software and they've put it out for free. I love seeing companies that are out there trying to help the hobbyist and help the consumer. Also, huge shout out to Chromebooks for sponsoring this video. Without sponsors, I don't make enough money to do this full time. And me doing this full time means I can put out better videos with higher production value and I can put them out more consistently. So shout out to them. I forgot to mention it, but this SketchUp file will be for download in the link in the description. That way, if you wanna reverse engineer what I just did and learn more or use it to help your project.